Alright, so about a week ago I got myself a new drone here, and this drone has these little carbon fiber arms on it. And I did eventually find the replacement parts for this, but they're kind of overpriced and you only get one arm. So I thought, you know what, I can 3D print some of these. So for this last week here, I decided to, to take this as a good excuse to try messing around with carbon fiber. So this is carbon fiber nylon. And to do that, you need a special nozzle. So inside of here, I actually have a, an A2, it's basically an A2, that's a tool steel, with an extra hard uh, surface hardening technique that they put on it so that it can endure the carbon fiber that runs through the printer. So, but what you get out of that is a very stiff plastic part, which is almost counterintuitive because plastic parts, especially nylon, tend to be a little bit flexible and tend to be, uh, their durability is thanks to the fact that they are a little bit flexible. So, you can see here, this is just cooled down and it releases with temperature release. I mean, this stuff has just been printing absolutely great. And this is printed solid. So when you take this and you actually try to flex it a little bit, it does flex a little bit, but it is quite a bit more stiff than, than what would just be like normally nylon. So if you look at these side by side, obviously the normal carbon fiber one looks a little bit better than the 3D printed one, but weight wise, yeah, the uh, 3D printed one, even though it's solid, printed solid, is still a fair bit lighter than the actual carbon fiber um, piece over here, which is solid carbon fiber. Now this is just like ridiculously stiff really hard to flex. Now this will flex a little bit, but it is a lot stiffer than what you would get out of just normal nylon. And then just take the, that off. And this is kind of my priming pattern. It actually goes down here, comes on over, and then comes back. And then the nozzle goes over there. That way I always get a nice primed nozzle. It is kind of a pain in the butt. There we go. And one thing I will mention here is that I did not have a working model before I actually 3D printed that part, so I had to reverse engineer it. And if you want to know how to do those techniques, I have uploaded a second uh, video that's just going over these details of how I actually recreated this part. It's a normal technique. We just take a picture and you know work your calipers and whatnot. But there's some other things that are particular to 3D printing that I'm, I'm doing here. So if you want to see that, there's a link in the description below to my second channel called Watch It Print. So this is my quadcopter all kind of taken apart. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take these arms off and I'm going to replace it with this arm. Just for the sake of it, to kind of see how it all flies with its own 3D printed stuff and see how this stuff actually works in the real world. You know, after I crashed a few times. So you notice how you could hear something that didn't sound quite right with that drone? Well, what you were hearing was just absolute chaos in the motors. Now this right here is what the motors should look like. Something like this, it does, you know, all the graphs, they're squiggly, but they're not crazy. What we were seeing there was something like this. Madness, right? Isn't that crazy? Watch what happens when I turn smoothing off. So that's what was going on inside of the motors. And when this thing was running, the motors would get super hot. I could not idle for more than 10 seconds without those motor, motors getting hot to the point where I thought I was going to have some serious problems. It was a good thing that I actually stopped when I did because I could have burned those motors up to be, you know, when I first was testing it there. But you can just see how crazy these motors are. Watch what happens when it plays back in real time. It's fluctuating between like idle and max throttle or just about about as fast as it can go there. Now I'm not 100% sure that this is a resonant frequency or something of the frame, but I can tell you that if you look at the gyros here, look at this as I, as I just go through it one step by one step, you can see that this is at 33 degrees and then it sends a drastically different reaction to the motor, so they do something different. Now look at that, it's 108 degrees, so it's just vibrating 98, 98, negative 22, so everything's just bounced back and forth about as rapidly as it can go. 
And this is just happening, I think this is pulling at a sample rate of 1,000. Now, it's my best guess that the frame was flexing just enough to throw everything into chaos. So I decided to embrace the spirit of rapid prototyping here and just throw in yet another model that's going to be stiffer. All I did is just create this extra boss, essentially, that just come that came off the side of the arm. This is a down and dirty quick solution to the problem, and then I created a mirror when I went to print this. So there, there's two arms instead of just one arm that you use all the way around. So when it prints out, it, it was looking like this, right? And when it was all said and done, these were a fair bit stiffer than the first arm. Now, one thing I didn't mention at the beginning, but it's important to understand of why I'm even going through this trouble, is that I kind of want to be able to 3D print some drones and have some fun with it because I would like to throw bigger arms and stuff onto a small drone and also come up with different shapes and whatnot that you can mount the motors to. But I got to understand all the dynamics that are going on here, and this is part of that testing just to get your feet wet. So all this stemmed from this little project right here, which was just me messing around in the CAD program, working with the topology study. So in this given environment, what you do is you you let the computer build a mesh and then you give it a parameter of how strong of a force it's going to experience and you know, all that material stuff. And then it feeds back, says, hey, the shape should be something like this. And then you can kind of re-engineer it and restudy it. And it's cool to be able to mess around with something like this and then actually build it and make it in real life and see how it actually works out you know, as compared to working on some sort of big machine that you probably aren't ever going to test a failure. So the greater purpose of everything I'm doing here is to learn new stuff. And fly drones. And 3D print. And just because I can. So talking about the material a little bit more, this is what I'm using. And the flexural modulus right down here is has a megapascal of 3,750. You don't necessarily need to understand exactly what you just this number, the bigger it is, the stiffer it is, right? Now, to the best of my knowledge, this is made of 3K carbon fiber sheet or plate that is actually machined down to its final shape. Now, uh, based on the actual information I was able to find on the internet, this is a 33,000 MSI. And if I did my numbers math right, this is roughly 60 times more stiff than the carbon fiber nylon, which it it sure feels that much stiffer. <laughs> I used this calculator right here. I just went from PSI and I think MSI is million pounds square inch. Now the flip side of this argument is, well, if it bends but doesn't break, then it's a little bit more durable. Whereas something like this, you know, if you can get it to bend, it pretty much will break. Whereas something like this, you know, it flexes a little bit, but then it goes back. So there's pros and cons to all of this. I go into more detail on this, again, on my other channel. All right, so it is done. Let's see what kind of flex we get here. Mm, still getting quite a bit of flex, even with that extra bit. Does it flex up though? Mm, yeah. Let's fire it up and see what happens. All right, so you can hear it and I can also feel it. This setup here is working much, much better. Whatever those vibrations were, they've been neutralized enough to where it's not affecting the flight performance of this drone anymore. So now it's time to fly it for real. <clears throat> all right, so it's a misty fall day. Uh, we're going to see how this all works out here, so I might get a little moisture on the camera. So far, so good in the air mode. <laughs> I forgot to record, but we're in air mode. Here we go. seem to be using a little bit more throttle just to kind of fly around. 
So just to comment on that, I was actually on the wrong throttle curve. I was a little bit too low. And I also changed the camera angle a little bit, made it a bit steeper there. So uh, the throttle was not perfectly placed for what I'm used to. I was kind of on the top end of the controller quite a bit. But what you can see here from this flight, which is going to be relatively tame for most of it, I'm not really juicing it all that much, is that it's flying really smooth. And it's also sounds like it's flying really good as well. Now this is on the exact same tune that I would run with the carbon fiber arms. I haven't really changed anything at all. You can see that there's no little bounce back there or anything, so the tune's working good. So based on my experience here, this seems like the flight performance of these arms is right there with the carbon fiber arms. I mean, I, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference if I didn't know. Now this flight is a total of five minutes, so if you want to skip forward, you can, but I'm going to fade to some music for right now and just enjoy the show. Well, okay, fine. <laughs> okay, this right here, this is why flying when it's wet just sucks. I'm going to carry half the yard with me. So for my second flight here, I was going to be a lot more aggressive. Unfortunately, I forgot to hit record, or maybe I stopped recording, on the goggles, so I don't have the DVR footage. I'll give you a quick little couple of flybys to let you hear the motors under a little bit more stress.
Ah, darn it. Well, I didn't intend to crash test it, but as you can see here, it broke. Damage report. Yep, it broke. So I've got one really bent prop over here, but I could probably bend that back. However, this arm over here did not survive. You can see that it broke probably right where you'd expect it to break, right down there where it connects to the frame where those bolts are. It looks like it might have just broken off like this, which would make sense, considering it looks like there might be some evidence that that's where I caught the tree branch. Maybe. We'll have to look at the footage to see, but... I think that thing just went right like that. And that's that would be the weak direction of those arms. I think some more engineering would have to go in to make these arms even comparable uh, to the pure or straight this carbon fiber material here. I'm guessing it would take quite a bit of material to get up to that strength, but I would think this drone here, if it was just on the normal arms, would have survived that crash. I've crashed these drones harder and they're still kicking just fine. Mainly, all I wanted to get out of this was a proof of concept. Can you 3D print arms, put it on a drone, and have it fly as good as the as the carbon fiber arms and what I found with this is that yes the flight performance of this was equivalent in, to what I was getting out of the carbon fiber arms now the crash performance is nowhere near the same as you can see I, I ripped off an arm but as a proof of concept I think I can move forward from here with the big five inch props and see how how this frame works out so I think the test was a you know, a success. And it was really interesting to see just how that vibration caused such chaos on this drone and how just a, a simple addition, which is just this little extra piece that comes down here next to the arms to make it just a little bit stiffer, really solved all those vibrations. There's some really cool stuff going on here inside these quadcopters. So look forward to exploring the project from here. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day. Stay awesome. Peace. Brothgar.